Every story needs a hero, and every story needs a villain. The audience needs someone to cheer and someone to boo and hiss. But what happens if the villain is unhappy with his role in the story? Could our perception of the villain be changed? Is there really, truly good in everyone, even the worst of the worst, even Judas? Will talking to God straighten out his situation? Let's find out. What a beautiful day, but then it's always a beautiful day in paradise. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and only friendly clouds in the sky. Don't you think it's beautiful, Judas? I guess so, Father. It's beautiful. I didn't think it was possible for someone to be so gloomy for over 2,000 years. I've been very confused for over 2,000 years. About what? I have two questions that bother me. Okay, maybe I can help. What's the matter? My first question is, why am I here? Man has been asking me that question since I created him. Where should you be? I don't know, but certainly not in paradise. I'm not sure what you mean, but maybe we can find out the answers to both questions at once. So what's your second question? Why me? Why you what? Why am I the villain of the New Testament? I think I even beat out Cain for the biggest villain of the Bible. You had 12 men to choose from, and you picked me to do it, or should I say picked on me. You could have picked Matthew. People would have believed it. Those tax collectors are all cheats anyway. Picked you to do what? Out of the 12 of us, you picked me to be the unspeakable, the unthinkable, the one thing that would go down in history as the most heinous crime ever. Why? Exactly what did you do again? Why was I the one chosen to be betrayed? Oh, that. You make it sound like it was nothing. I betrayed the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the holiest of the holy. Or you can call him any of those names he's been given to the men that crucified him. Isn't that horrible? Yes, I suppose it is. That's how people remember me. That's true, but it wasn't all about you. What do you mean? The events of that day helped to fulfill prophecies that were made hundreds of years before you were born. All of those prophecies pointed to you. It couldn't have been anyone else. You just set it all in motion. Really? Jesus' ancestor, King David, presided that you would, even my close friend, someone I trusted, um, who shared my bread um, has turned against me. Okay, that was me. Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. None of us knew what he was talking about. At the time, it made no sense. The prophet Zechariah foretold the fee you received. 30 pieces of silver, money that I tried to give back. Those wicked Pharisees wouldn't take them. In the book of Exodus, that was the exact price of the slave. With those 30 pieces of silver, you bought the life of the greatest server, ser servant of all mankind. Greater love has no one than this, and that he laid down his life for his friends. He laid down his life for his friends and for his enemies, for people he never met, and for people who hadn't been born yet. I don't follow you. Do you remember what Jesus said on the cross? Forgive them. They do not know what they, have, what they are doing. In his final, final moments, while the un unimaginable pain, Jesus thought more of the ones who killed him than the ones he did himself. He, ho he loved them, so I did what he asked. I forgave them. That's all well and good, but I still don't understand. Why did it have to be me? I'm still going to be remembered as one of the one who betrayed Jesus. No one will ever name their kid after me. I won't uh, get a, a, a picture on a baseball card. Is that all you're worried about, your legacy? 
How can I change your thinking? You are the man who made it happen. Without you, there would be no forgiveness. Even though you hurt Jesus, you help save the world. St. Paul said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of who I am the worst. Jesus was born to save sinners, but without his death, no one would be saved. You made it possible for all of humanity to be saved. Jesus has the perfect, blameless offering for the whole world's sins. Because of you, that offering was able to be collected. As the treasurer, you should understand how that works. Treasurer, collector, not a bad pun. Uh, I don't know. You're, you're telling me that Jesus died on the cross so that the whole world could be saved, even me, the worst of the worst? He died for you. Remember John 3.16? For God loved the world, he gave his only one son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus paid for your sins on the cross. No matter what the sin is, it's forgiven. What Joseph said to his brothers, Jesus would say to you, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Also, I'm proud that you tried to atone what you did, you felt remorse, and you still believe in him. You believe in him, don't you? Of course I believe. Believe with all of your heart? Absolutely. I was there for, for the miracles. I saw them all. And I believe everything he told us, every bit of it. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Father, is that why I'm here in paradise, even though I don't deserve to be? That's why you're here, but you need to forgive yourself. I've forgiven you, therefore you belong in paradise with the believers in all eternity. Lord, you're right. It is beautiful here. I don't know anyone would want to leave here, but heard that Jesus was going back to earth. Is it true? Yes, it is true. When? Mark 13, 32. No one knows the day or hour, even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So basically, I'm not telling you. Why do you want to know? Well, when he goes back. Yeah? Do you think he could put in a good word for me down there? Amen.